Okay, so we're gonna start going through our Olympic lifting teaching progression. So we're gonna work top down on all the lifts to start to learn them. Uh, first, I wanna make sure everybody's clear on how to figure out hand and foot spacing for the lifts. Um, so foot spacing, I think a lot of our high school kids, especially uh, our linemen and our bigger kids that come in, their feet end up really, really wide when they start to do these. I, I don't know if that's a result of being a lineman or their coach coaches them that way. Um, but I wanna make sure we get foot spacing down first. Okay, so the way we like to do foot spacing is you can do a depth drop or you can just have them act like they're gonna do a vertical jump. So Chrissy, go ahead and take a big step back real quick. Yep. And we're just gonna have Chrissy take a small step and then act like she's gonna do a vertical jump. Yep, so there's her foot spacing. That's where she's gonna get the most force into the floor and therefore be able to develop the most power out of these lifts when we start doing the actual lifts. So that's gonna give us a rough estimate of where Chrissy's feet should go uh, when we start addressing the bar here. And then to figure out hand spacing, uh, we're gonna go thumb at the knurling. So the end of the thumb should be touching the knurling if you can see that on Christy there. And then you're just gonna do a hook grip, roll the thumb into the hand and grab the bar. I'm gonna stand up. And Christy told me before this, she likes her grip a little bit wider. Um, she's been Olympic lifting for a long time and that's just kind of preference at this point. Um, so if you see that throughout the video, she just kind of made the lift her own, throwing her own style on it and what's comfortable for her. Um, but a good general rule of thumb, again, thumbs at the knurling, go into the hook grip from there. All right, for the snatch or any snatch progression that we're gonna go through, the foot spacing is gonna be the exact same as we've already talked about. Um, the hands are obviously gonna go out a little bit wider. Okay, so the way we like to measure it is we're gonna have Christy bring the bar up till her arms are at 90 degrees here. Yep, so we got a good 90 position here. Um, and then we're just gonna have her go out about two finger lengths on the bar. Yep, and that's gonna give us a rough estimate of where to start. All right, again, Chrissy's been doing this for a long time. Um, so she may prefer that a little bit wider, or a little bit narrower. It's kind of up to her to make the lift her own at that point. Just a general guideline, go to 90, a few fingers out, we can start from there. All right, our first pro progression in our power clean teaching. So we're gonna start again, top down, make sure Christy's hitting all these positions as she's learning the lift. Okay, so she's got her good hand position, feet look good from where we're at. We're gonna have her get into what's called the power position to start. Okay, so the bar, go ahead and see it all the way up, Christy, sorry. Yep. So things look good, feet are flat. She's just gonna kind of unlock the knees a little bit right there. That's all we're trying to get to right now, our power position. Okay, as she's bending down there, rather than the knees translating directly forward, we do want the knees to come out just barely, almost as if they're spiraling the feet into the ground. Okay, go ahead and come back up, Christy. Let's do one more good there. Yep. So the last thing I'm kind of checking for from the side here is Christy's torso should be pretty vertical in this position still. Right, because here we're going to end up accelerating the barbell straight up. And if she gets into a funny position here, the barbell is going to go either too far forward or too far back and be really hard to control when we get to the lift. All right, so a few common mistakes you'll see is people will actually bow forward and start to go into their RDL, right? Because that's kind of what we've been going over. So I would almost expect to see that from most people. Yep. And again, we'll just have her start over, unlock the knees, torso should be straight up and down. The other thing you'll see is people start to get worried about. Um, getting the bar to go up. So people that may be more experienced with Olympic lifting, you'll actually see them squat down and their shoulders will go back that little bit, right? Again, if the shoulders get too far forward or too far back. When we start to do the lifts, the bar is gonna go either way and that's gonna throw off the, just about the entire lift. Okay, once they've mastered the power position that we just went through, we're gonna start to add in a little jump and shrug, right? That's gonna be the fastest part of the lift, but we're gonna keep it slow right now since we're really hammering home this technique. So Christy's in a good power position. She's just gonna start to straighten the legs out. Shoulders are gonna come towards the ears and that's it for right now. Yep. So I'd have Christy pause at the bottom just like she's doing to make sure our power position's good. Knees straighten, shoulders come up and there we go. Next into this, we're gonna start to add a little bit of a catch. So as we learned the front squat before, we're gonna try to get the bar up onto the shoulders Yep, and she shouldn't really be muscling anything once she gets into that position. So again, if our clients can front squat, that position should be pretty familiar to them. So good power position, nice and slow, bar stays pretty close, and she's able to get her elbows under it. So the one thing we will, will mention um, is as Christy starts pulling the bar up, rather than muscling the bar all the way up, you'll actually see her start to drop under it and squat a little bit, right? So rather than muscling it, you'll see her start to drop and kind of meet the bar. And when things get faster with more weight, that's gonna become very, very important very quickly. All right, the next piece to this puzzle is just adding in uh, a little bit of speed here. 
Okay, so rather than Christy going so slow and muscling things, I've seen her hit the positions now. Maybe that's a week or two, maybe that's a few reps, uh, maybe that's a month, depending on the client. But we'll just start to speed things up. So she, can she get into her position to start, jump, shrug, and then she gets back under it. Yep. There we go. And obviously Christy's very fast. She makes Lance and I look really slow. It's demoralizing, but we gotta live with it. One more for the camera. Again, good power position. Christy's able to go basically straight up, shoulders come towards the ears, she meets the bar, it's not crashing down on her. Okay, so Christy's mastered the power position. She's gone through our muscle clean really slow, started to catch the barbell, get a feel for the positions. We saw her speed it up. Now we're just gonna start to work our way down in the lift. Okay, so she's gonna start out in an RDL position. Again, golden rule here. Shin should be vertical when the bar's at the knee. She's got that down. Spine position looks good again, just like we saw with the RDL. Um, and now she's going to start to bring the hips forward, which should drive the knees forward a little bit. And she gets back to that power position. So Christy, go ahead and go back down to our RDL. Now if you pause when you get to the power position, just nice and slow right there. Again, should look just like what we saw as we were practicing the power position. Feet are flat, torso is relatively vertical right there. Um, she's in a good position that we talked about before. Let's go ahead and go back down to the knee. When we're teaching this to most people, we'll have them just go from the knee to the power position and right back down to the knee. Yep, and one more there. There we go. So as you'll see, go ahead and stand up and relax for a second, Christy. As you'll see, this is a little bit different than your traditional um, deadlift pull or RDL. All right, we're going to demonstrate a deadlift or an RDL real quick. So I'm going to go to the knee, Christy. And you'll notice as Christy does this, the knees don't come forward. If it's a true deadlift or what we would consider a true deadlift, um, she's just kind of bringing the hips forward and standing up. There's no second knee bend or scoop or whatever you want to call it. Um, versus our power lifter, or I'm sorry, our Olympic lifting positions. Hips come forward, which drives the knee fo knees forward a little bit so that she can get back to the power position every time. All right, so we're going to put our first two pieces of the puzzle together, right? We looked at the power position, and we also looked at going from the knee up to the power position, and we saw Christy catch a few um, from the power position as well. So we're gonna to start to link those things up. Okay, so the way I would normally coach this through progression, so we'll have Christy go to her RDL position. Yep, we'll have her go slowly to the power position, make sure it feels right. Right, and then from there, she's just gonna jump and shrug. Yep. And back down to the knee. Again, hips are driving things. She gets to the power position, jumps and shrugs. And after a few of those, we can start to add in a catch here as well. Yep. Again, just starting to link the pieces of the puzzle here together. Yep. And let's do one more, Christy. And there we go. Okay, the last piece to teaching the clean here is just starting from the floor, right? If Christy already knows how to deadlift, which we've seen, right, this should be pretty easy. Okay, we've done the hard part. We've gone from the, the knee to the power position and the jump and the shrug, which is completely new, right? Christy's Good position, we're gonna have her pause when she gets to her knee. Again, to check our golden rule, shins are vertical while she's at the knee. We'll have her slowly go to that power position. Torso's vertical, feet are flat, she's in a good power position. From there, she can start to jump and shrug. Yep. Again, as we're first teaching this, we're gonna do these pieces very slow and kind of check along the way. Let's do another slow one here, Christy. Again, just making sure that our clients and athletes can hit these positions these are going to get very technical as you can see. Beautiful there, good power position. She can slowly jump and shrug there. Yep. And then we'll have, a, have her go slow till we get to the power position. And then from there, we'll have her actually jump, shrug, and catch the bar now. And pause at the knee there, Christy. Good position there. Power position looks good. I would say, all right, go ahead, jump and shrug. And she catches the bar there, beautiful. So do one more just like that. Again, checking our positions. Uh, the more correct reps we do, the, the harder it's gonna be later on to mess it up. Especially with our new people, making sure everything looks pristine just about every time. And go ahead and jump and shrug, beautiful. And there we go, we'll start to make it a little bit faster in the third video. Um, and start to link everything together. Okay, so we've seen Christy has command of all these positions in the clean. Um, we're gonna start to switch over to the, uh, the snatch now, okay? So 
It's a little bit different. Uh, hands are farther out and obviously the bar ends up overhead. But for teaching purposes, it's the exact same. I would want to see the same positions at the knee, at the power position, and on the floor, um, and see her get to those positions as she's learning this. Okay, so it's roughly the same for teaching, even though it's going to feel a little different for Christy at the end of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and go down to the knee, Christy. Again, she's familiar with an RDL. We've been working on cleans through our video. Looks pretty good. Her shins are vertical, our golden rule. Shins are vertical, the bar is at the knee. We'll have her slowly come up. The hips are driving everything. Feet are flat, torso's vertical. She's in a good power position there. We'll have her slowly jump and shrug. Yep, jump and shrug look good. Let's go back down to the knee there, Christy. Again, good position, power position. And go ahead and jump and shrug. Yep. Okay, one thing I do wanna bring up is uh, when we're first teaching people the lifts, is they'll get really tense because it's something new to them and they don't want to mess up, right? Uh, one of the hardest things I find to get people out of is if they're tense, when they go to jump and shrug, their arms are going to stay straight and locked out the whole time, okay? So Christy, as you do this, jump and shrug. I want your arms to just be like noodles and they should just kind of bend up as a result, yes. So because she's jumping and shrugging, the elbows are just coming up. Yep, arms are staying loose. One more time there. There we go. Okay, so let's go back down to the knee. We'll make sure she gets to the power position. Then we'll have her catch it overhead. Slowly to the power position to make sure it looks good. And jump, shrug, and catch. Yep, let's do one more there, Christy. And I'll have you pause overhead so we can take a look at the position there. And go ahead and stand up and pause there. Okay, so as I'm looking at Christy from the side, I should um, not be able to see her ear. Arms should be covering up her ear if she's hit what's called the slot. Okay, and it's called the slot. It's in this very fine path here of the bar, a few inches front to back. All the, the stress and the weight is mostly on the joints um, and just biomechanically through the long bones and the shoulder girdle. Okay, so it should be pretty easy, pretty stable. Um, shouldn't have a whole lot of time standing up when we go to do a, or shouldn't have a whole hard, ugh, my goodness, shouldn't have a hard time standing up out of the bottom of a full snatch if she's hit this position at the bottom of it. And go ahead and relax, Christy. All right, in part one, we looked at do our clients and athletes even qualify to start doing the lifts? And if they do, what you've seen in this video is how to get in the proper position time and time again throughout the lifts. Right? And the reason we really uh, are worried about these positions is when we start doing the full lift, it's gonna get very, very technique heavy. And if that technique is off, when we start putting weight in their hands, things are gonna go awry really quickly. So in our third video, we'll start putting the pieces of the puzzle together, add in the jerk, and start to get to the full lifts.